Hey, welcome back friends. If you want to join the friends, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Today we have a pretty special update. We have the winter weekend for 2017 and 2018. As you can see, there's a couple different weekends. We have a combat weekend, a Manifold and Softenim weekend, a mini games weekend, gathering and support skills, clue scrolls, and an artisan skills. So there's going to be quite a few different weekends. I think that's six of them total. Uh, but every single one is going to be extremely different and is going to encourage you to be doing something completely different with your account. Now, the first thing I do want to talk about is something that's actually going to be active throughout the entire thing. Uh, from the 1st of December to the 8th of January, that is from the start of the first weekend until the end of the last weekend, ports are going to be much better. Uh, you get 25 voyages per day instead of 15. Uh, that's not super important, it just means that you can be a little bit more picky, choosy with the different uh, voyages that you're getting, unless if you're just starting ports. Because when you're just starting ports, voyages are only about 20 minutes a piece and you have two ships going out. So you can get done with all 15 voyages within one day. I think the first and the second region are both, if you're playing a decent amount, you can get rid of all 15 voyages and do them all throughout, uh, do all the voyages. So I would recommend starting ports if you have not already, and if you already have, then you can re-roll a little bit more liberally with your voyages so that you can get the ones that you really want. Uh, all player-owned ports voyages return 30% extra resources or trade goods. Now this is insane. That means you're getting extra resources. Uh, so even if you're just halfway through ports, you definitely want to be doing them every single day because of this update. Uh, and then also the Barmaid Special Voyage on Saturday and Sunday as well as Thursday. Uh, the If you don't already know, the Barmaid Special vo Voyage usually gives you a large quantity of resources. So on top of the 30% extra resources you're getting, you're also getting better voyages from the Barmaid. So definitely make sure you are doing ports. Uh, if you haven't already started it, try your best to get a level 90 skill and start up ports. Uh, from the 1st of December on because it will help you a lot with getting to the higher regions a lot faster. Uh, let's go ahead and go up to the first weekend and start talking about combat to start out with. Uh, from the 1st to the 4th of December is going to be combat. Charm drops give one more charm than usual. Uh, increased chance of getting the rare drop table if you're wearing a ring of wealth or luck of the dwarves or anything like that. 50% uh, increased Slayer experience so that's insane. All Slayer assignments are treated as if you're using a Slayer VIP ticket. Um, basically that's a Slayer update, definitely worth doing Slayer on this weekend. Uh, a lot of Slayer monsters only drop one charm, so you're basically doubling your charms. Uh, if you do get a Dragon Task or something like that, I think they drop four charms at a time, so instead they'll drop five, not that big of an increase. But if you get like, I don't know, Water Fiends, uh, you're going to get like 600 charms per hour. So definitely worth doing, and the 50% increased Slayer experience is definitely worth it. Uh, Shadow Worlds gives you 50% extra anima. If you are, um, if you're going to be doing Shattered Worlds, there are two different times you could do it, and both times you get 50% extra anima. So if you're not doing Slayer, Shattered Worlds is a decent option. On top of that, uh, there's a couple of bossing updates. Uh, Maz Cab you can raid once per day, so that means every single day there's going to be a lot of people doing it. Uh, a lot of new guys probably, so make sure you get your raids in. 10% uh, cheaper instant fees for your boss training, and you can also choose your boss slayer task from Reaper. So again, you probably want to do some bossing on this weekend if you're not doing slayer. Uh, it's up to you, but I personally am probably going to be training up slayer seeing as I'm not level 120 yet during this weekend. But... Uh, if you're not doing that, bossing is a decent option. Uh, I'll probably try to start up raids, actually. I haven't done any raids yet. I did it on my Iron Man a lot, so I know how to do it, but I haven't actually done it yet. Metaphor Softenim. This seems a little bit strange from the 8th to the 11th of December. Uh, they are giving you some updates or some bonuses to Metaphor and Softenim. I'm probably going to be skipping over this because I already have uh, Metaphor already completely unlocked. Uh, I have all my reputation done, but if you haven't done that already... You are going to be getting 50% increased reputation in Menopo, so big, big buff there. That means you can get 30,000 er, 30, reputation per day from obelisks. Or if you choose to be doing fishing or something like that, you're just going to get a 50% increase to the amount of reputation you're going to be getting. Uh, shifting tombs, if you're going to be doing it for XP, you do get 75% extra XP. I would not recommend doing shifting tombs for reputation on this weekend because the next weekend is there's actually better update. 
Uh, but if you are basically doing any kind of reputation games, do it on this weekend. Unless if you're doing Shifting Tombs, uh, then you would want to do it on the next weekend. Another thing is you get double experience from Plover Bird Hunting. Uh, if you don't already know what that is, that's actually one of the better ways of getting reputation. If you want to check out my guide, I'll put it in the links down below for all the different ways of getting reputation in Menophos. Uh, but Plover Bird Hunting was actually pretty close to max uh, max speed. And you don't have to have any reputation percentage or anything like that to get the maximum amount. You just have to. It is click intensive, but you are getting double experience for hunting. So... If you're looking at doing hunting and you also need some uh, reputation in Menophos, look into Plover Bird Hunting. I do explain how it works in that video. Next weekend is going to be mini games. I know a lot of people are really going to like this. Uh, I personally don't have any mini game goals, so I probably will be skipping over this weekend. Uh, from the 15th to the 18th, uh, I also am going to be visiting with family, so I'm not going to have quite as much time to do it. But on this weekend, I have plus one Castle Wars gold tickets per game. Uh, it's a pretty standard mini game. Winter weekend, you get an additional gold ticket. Uh, if you're going for Trim Comp Cape ever in the future, it's probably worth doing that this weekend. Also, Trim Comp, uh, plus one medal from Fish Flinger per game. A couple of other benefits are double commendation from Pest Control and Conquest, double BXP, uh, bonus experience from B Barbarian Assault. Both of them extremely good to start out with. Might as well just do them on this weekend instead of another time. Also, there's going to be plenty of people doing it on this weekend, so I know that's going to be a big buff for pest control because a lot of times you just can't find a boat on pest control. Uh, so if you've been looking into getting the elite um, elite void outfit, now would be the time to do it. It only takes a couple hours. Uh, plus 50% Dominion factor earned. Uh, if you're looking at doing the Dominion Tower for the gloves or anything, now would be the time to do it. Uh, there's also a couple other benefits to it, but right now just do Dom fact or Dominion Tower if you want to do that at any point in time. Uh, Livid Farm is going to be 50% increased produce. Uh, I know that they actually reduce the amount of produce that you need by half, so if you're looking at getting Comp Cape, this is a Comp Cape requirement. Do that this weekend. It's pretty quick. Uh, Astro runes are probably going to go up in price a little bit, like on the weekend before that, uh, until the week of. So you may even want to look into investing into astro runes because I know whenever they have something like this for livid farms, astro runes go up pretty heavily because you use a lot of astro runes during livid farm. Uh, Six hundred daily bonus points in cabbage face panet face punch bonanza. You already have six hundred daily bonus points so you just get an extra 600 uh, I believe it's 600 that you have usually so if you plan on grinding out cabbage face puzzle bonanza you can do it this weekend not that big of a buff uh, this is what I was talking about though 100% increased Menophos reputation from shifting tombs if you're doing shifting tombs do it during the minigame weekend instead of actually doing it during the Menophos self name weekend because you can get an extra I don't know 33% uh, reputation if you do it on this weekend instead of the weekend before because usually uh, on last weekend you'd only get 50% increase and now you get 100% increase so definitely worth doing now instead of the weekend before uh, double zeal from soul wars nobody does that if you're going for the pet that might be a good time to do it because I know not many people do soul wars um, so if you want the toko uh, tokar pet or whatever it is the jad pet um, that would be the time to get it Shadow Worlds, an extra 50% anima, so again, if you are looking in Shadow Worlds, do it now or the first weekend. Gathering and support skills. Uh, now, this is actually a pretty good time for them to be doing it from the 22nd to the 25th, because this is when everybody's going to be kind of doing their Christmas kind of stuff. Uh, and a lot of this is all AFK, so divination, basically the springs last double the time, and you get an enriched div divination node every 10 minutes. So very good AFK thing to do. I'll probably be doing this the majority of the weekend. Uh, fishing, the spots move around half as frequently, so it just makes it a little bit more AFK. Thieving, uh, if you are doing Pyramid Plunter, there is a double chance for Black Ibis and the Pharaoh Scepter. This, eh, if, I, if this was an Iron Man thing, it would be good, but since Iron Man can't even get it, it's not going to be good at all. Uh, Dungeoneering, double tokens from regular Dungeoneering with a couple of the rewards that they've been putting out, like the advanced uh, gold accumulator. Now would be a good time to kind of grind for that if you don't have enough tokens. And also no experience penalties upon death, so that means that you can just suicide basically the entire thing and it will actually make Dungeoneering Floors hopefully go faster instead of people being kind of pansy about it. 
of Hunter. Basically, another thing is you can do Uncharted Isles. Uh, you get two Orakami spawns, and there's a 10% chance of not depleting a resource. So you get 10% extra resources whenever you are going to an island. If you're going to start up the Uncharted Isles, now would be a good time to do it if you have a couple extra minutes. And again, AFK. So Divination and Uncharted Isles are probably going to be pretty good AFK things to do. A uh, higher chance of getting the Pit minigame. So that means that you can get the... Uh, outfit for agility, the nimble outfit a little bit faster, and mining nodes and trees replenish twice as quickly. So again, just making it more AFK. The next weekend after that is going to be the weekend that I'm probably going to really enjoy from the 29th to the 1st of January is the Clue Scrolls. I kind of enjoy doing Clue Scrolls, and it's been a while since I actually got into them. I do have a pretty high level, so I can get a free Elite every single day. Uh, depending on your level, you can get an Easy, Medium, Hard, or an Elite. Uh, you get one free reroll for clue rewards per day, so that means I'm going to be wanting to do at least one clue scroll every single day. I'm uh, probably going to do many, many more than that, and there's also a better chance of actually getting the clue scrolls. So that means you can do them a lot faster. Uh, I would like it if they kind of buffed clue scrolls right before this, because I know they have a clue scroll update coming in. Uh, if they do that about halfway through the month, this would be an excellent time. Do the update on Monday and then have this weekend the weekend after that. I could see that working out extremely well, uh, and that means that they would be stackable if they do choose to do that. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see for the December behind the scenes. They'll see if that's coming out. Uh, you also get a festive box. That means that you can get Slayer VIP tickets, Silverhawk Down, Tight Springs, Charms, and Experience Lamps and Stars. Uh, I plan on trying to get as many of these as possible throughout this weekend, and hopefully opening them all in one go if they can be banked. Uh, that would be a pretty good video in my opinion, and I hope that uh, it's something that people would enjoy. And the last weekend is going to be Artisan Skills Weekend. Uh, basically, if you want to be using urns, you want to set up your urns on that weekend because you get a 10% extra urns whenever you combine them with the runes. So use urns on this weekend if you can, or make them on this weekend, you don't have to use them on this weekend. Uh, you get 25% increased fletching experience, uh, I would just wait till double experience weekend for that. Smithing, you get double XP and respect from Artisan's Workshop, so definitely worth doing this on this weekend. And rune crafting is another thing, increased node spawns and double reward points at Rune Span. If you are going for, again, Trim Comp, I believe it is, uh, you need a lot of reward points, so now would be a good time to do that. And node spawns being increased means you get more XP. Uh, this is probably what I'm going to be doing throughout the weekend, because... I'm trying to get the outfit for rune crafting, uh, so I would probably want to grind out the outfit during this weekend if I can. Uh, it's pretty AFK, so I can just do it while chilling out. Uh, construction, 10% increased chance of saving a plank. Again, wait till double experience weekend. Cooking, reduced chance to burn food. Uh, that might be worthwhile for an Iron Man account because you don't want to burn food at all. Uh, may mean that you can get increased experience as well. Uh, if you're doing it for the experience, probably wait till double experience weekend. If you're doing it for uh, GP gains or for uh, the hope of getting a little bit of extra experience, might be worthwhile doing. Uh, probably not too big of a buff though. Uh, herb lore, an extra 2.5% chance to save the secondary ingredient when mixing potions. I don't know if this is only active if you have the if, scroll of efficiency, uh, but hopefully that is active. Uh, my recommendation would be to do smithing and rune crafting during this weekend though. Hopefully you guys all enjoy this and you take advantage of all these weekends. If you do, leave a like down below and leave a comment of what you're looking forward to most. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see all my future content and see what I do every single weekend. As always though, have a good one.